This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 665 Tuesdays, no, four Tuesdays, I can't count, 664 Tuesdays that we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here on the Twitter, uh, ready to roll with you guys tonight. First of all, we have with us on the line from, ooh, no, you're not there anymore, Beacon, New York, he is the only man ever with a future endeavor letter from the WWE, he is Mad Mike. Sorg, you can't math, you can't geography. What is going my, on tonight? My my producer left, and I'm falling apart over here. I'll be your producer. Oh, geez. Todd, Toddy, Toddy is produce, with us. I produce my own show. I could produce this there one. There you go. Throw those W's up. Welcome, That's everybody, right. for the Mayhem Maniacs out there. I'm Toddy from Thrifty Podcast. Thank you for coming out to watch this. Throw those W's up at home. If you feel welcome watching this stream. W baby. Absolutely. Toddy of the Thrifty Podcast with us here. Got a lot of stuff going on. And I think you brought some brought some interesting stuff with you as well. We'll talk about later in the show. Yep. So and of course uh, we'll talk about your WrestleMania experience too. Mm-hmm. So uh also on the line from the other side of Pittsburgh. Uh it sounds less yeah. interesting. Yeah, it, 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 it's, yeah it's it's not it's we need not to do as something about that. Like Monroeville. Like, I could I could uh, oh, go ahead, Sorg. I'm, I'm but stepping over from from just miles from the site of the original Dawn of the Dead filming in Monroeville, PA. It is the Riz. How have I never connected that for you? Yeah, you never did that. Welcome to you, Zombie done, Town, USA. Done, the Riz. You've done that before, though. Um, I, I, you've done that before on, on when I'm on the show. Sometimes maybe maybe like, was, you, you've 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 called it zombieville usa probably probably uh, closer to zach and mary uh make a porno when it came out that's true that's yeah, probably because it was true. like just on my mind so yeah uh, uh but hi sword hi so hi. this is the wrestling mayhem show we're going to about talk about professional wrestling in maybe avengers endgame if mike has definitely avengers <laughs> yeah. bye, 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 bye. No. we'll get into it missy is missing bye, no, bye, bye, no. This, this is your own fault i watched her drive away listen i looked out that window and watched my watched my producer drive away from this show we have literally we have driven the producer away from the show or more accurately she drove herself away from the show she couldn't bear to watch or listen to this no no <laughs> to be fair i think you've driven her away we just got here <laughs> she true. seemed she seemed always very kind and nice to me so it wasn't me it wasn't me <laughs> it wasn't toddy yeah, all we know is me. Not I mean, now out of that. i'm not there now out of you three i don't know i don't know <laughs> who knows what no, I'm, not, I'm not there so it's not my fault true true uh true. we will spoil alert the hell out of this if you have not seen oh, uh, right. game yet hasn't seen <sighs> if it, we'll do that late show wait, wait, don't worry wait, about wait, it wait what wait what Hold on, yeah. When 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 I say mm-hmm. I didn't see it, mm-hmm. it's my own damn fault. Yes, yeah, it is. No, Tina has children. Mm-hmm. I Tina has children. I'm she training it whenever the damn hell she gets do, a chance do, to. Do you not realize I'm training for something? Yes. Riz, do I've, you I've not realize you can train in movie theater? I've been in place, doing, motherfucker. No. <laughs> Anyways, no. this is the wow. wrestling Run mayhem in show. For three hours. That is marathon training. You can take. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you have to train to watch Endgame. Uh, <laughs> check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can find links and subscribe to us in podcast and video form, and look us up on your favorite platform. You can also ask your Google Home to play the show uh, on uh, uh, Google Play Podcast, or ask your Amazon Echo to play the Wrestling Mayhem Show on TuneIn. Uh, your mileage may vary depending on the skill sets on your device, from what I understand, as we were discussing on Awesome Cast this week. But you can listen to the shows in some fashion across much of the Sogertron Media uh, Podcast Network uh, through many of those formats. Uh, also, you can drop us an email at that email address. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Although, 
Endgame at WrestlingMayhemShow.com will also reach you. I'm just going to start saying random words every time now. That is. That is. Because they all, they all go the same. You know, we all sorg. You know what our email should be every week? Whatever the secret word is on, uh, on um, Firefly. So socio, sociopath at WrestlingMayhemShow.com will also get you, no matter how you spell sociopath. Um, also, you can drop us a line at 412-206-WMAT0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show, well, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. And, of course, we are here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're doing streams. We're talking about whatever uh, as we're preparing and getting people to log into their Google Hangouts to start the show. Um, also, play, uh, blah, 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 uh, reach out to uh, producer Missy at that email address if you're interested in any uh, a- advertising uh, to reach out to this audience. No, 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 no. We're not doing that part. Or want to be okay. part of our in-studio audience. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including our friends at the fan of the show $1 level. Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. And brand new to the Patreon is our friend is our our is is our uh our friends uh at uh, Team Hama Fist, I believe representing Florida, if I'm not mistaken, Mike, right? Uh, yes, it, it's a hot set of bullshit titties. They what? would want me to say uh, that. What? Wow. They would they would wow. want me to say that. Trust oh, me. Oh, they would have? Should they put a note here? Yeah. Bro. What is no? What? I, I don't think you, I don't think you have to say it every week. Okay, okay, we'll see. Holy we'll cow! See. I mean, holy cow! <laughs> I, I, I guess that's how they roll in Florida. <laughs> I, I, I'm not Florida man. The the views made by Man Mike are not in association with the or, or our Patreon supporters <laughs> or uh, or, yeah. or me whatsoever <laughs> yes. or, or me whatsoever. I, I, I know that. I know them. Team him, very team him this is a nice place. All right, There's nice, pre- very nice, nice people. Okay, and our friends at the Pocket Florida Club, nice our friends at the Pocky Club, five dollar level. Bradley Ruthers, uh, Doc Remedy, Dave Potter, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery, and our managers at least for the rest of the week at the twenty dollar level. Mad Mike and Occupy Pro Wrestling. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the show. And also, I just want to note here: uh, we you may have noticed some differences on the Patreon, especially on the Pocky Club and up levels. We fixed the content on Patreon. I didn't realize that we had a a dearth of content since uh, the end of January. Fixed it. You got stuff, and we did a lot of extra content the last couple of weeks, especially. Uh, doing some new stuff here, including some exclusive discussions with our interviewees. Uh, last week, uh, the Hollywood Couture, uh, Katie Arquette, uh, and company there, uh, Calvin Couture, uh, uh, Elijah Dean, uh, and uh, doing some post interviews with people there on this show as well. Uh, had a long discussion about the Firefly House, uh, Firefly Funhouse last week after the show. Uh, getting a deep dive into it with our guests, so go check those out. A lot of lot of content, and and my my. Extra podcast with uh, cameraman Rob at RWA. Uh, go check all that at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting it. Speaking of the Firefly Funhouse. Yeah. This yeah. is week two of the what the hell is happening on my TV experiment that has got me very interested in professional wrestling so, tonight. So the first topic is Bray Wyatt Firefly. Yes. Okay. Well, first and foremost, pretty. Um, I, I'll, I'll go for it. I'll do it. I'm in. Um, with Bray Wyatt here and him doing sort of a, a Mister Rogers type character. Mm. Um, he has been hinting, um, very slightly in his promos. If you, if uh, those aware, that um, he could be brainwashed. So they could easily make one step into this and two steps back to return him to his original character because he says, like, uh, you know, I'm not like that anymore. And I've seen, uh, you know, right. I've seen the light or whatever. So he it could just be like a ruse and a complete brainwash so they could get themselves out of that. A, a nice back door written in there, right? Yeah. So, so in and- case it flops, they'll just say, oops, brainwashed. You know how it goes. Mm. Uh, just, just so you know, as we were talking about this on SmackDown, it's the rerun of last night's episode. Oh no! You're watching SmackDown and recording. Yes. <laughs> okay. Multitasking. <laughs> okay. It's, it's multitasking, sir. I'm already triple tasking, so I can't watch this. SmackDown. I am amazing at this. Sometimes, never. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's how he gives. That's why. That's why. That's why Rez gives the best uh, uh, discussion points in the first uh, half an hour of this show. Yeah, uh, and, then, and then it just it just nose dives. Mm-hmm. Nose dives. Okay, so you got twenty more minutes in. Twenty more minutes, and then the context more? done from the 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 Riz. Uh, oh, maybe. maybe three okay three minutes. Uh, so so interesting well, there's a story i, I read uh, the uh local davidson school uh south of pittsburgh here apparently that is where they filmed these segments with bray wyatt and, and the fun house and, and made the puppets and everything this is um a, a part of that is tom savini's school for effects yeah it's, who, who has worked with wwe in the past yeah this is douglas education center douglas i'm sorry yeah, it was douglas education center and they do uh, graphic design, makeup design, stuff like everything. that. Yeah, yeah. They, um, I, back when I represented in art school, they were like our main competitor and kicked <laughs> our ass every day. Yeah, cool school, but yeah, that's Tom Savini's school up there, Douglas. It, so they did that, and it, even uh, our friend Dutters like was just doing mock interviews there, like like yesterday. Mm-hmm. So uh, a cool local connection there. I don't know if they'll make an appearance of Scarehouse Tina uh, either, but um, um, but uh, it'll be interesting. It, it's interesting. It's cool. It's a cool local. Uh, uh, connection justin labar on his uh wrestling Re- reality podcast actually interviewed uh, the guy that i think helped direct the segments as well mm-hmm. and he had some kind of things to say about bray and said he's he was a really interesting person to work with and and you know kind of uh had, had some really good acting chops uh for the spots that they were filming for that and these were i mean this is you know not much wrestling promo kind of thing like this is this was a production this is a you know edited uh maybe no, probably not multi-cam uh, production that they put together for these segments so far. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, most of the Bray Wyatt stuff has really good production value to it mm-hmm. because you can tell he doesn't let much of WWE creative have anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah, he kind of have his hands-on approach to it, so that'd be interesting um, uh, to see where this goes with it. And who knows what happens when they get in the ring? You know, I'm very scared. About I know. That. I know most people are not very confident in that, but in the meantime, we have some good content here from week to week uh with this um also uh connected to that we he's been making fun of the, the merch department apparently uh, <laughs> oh yeah the t-shirts i think are, it's intentional <laughs> the it's t-shirt intentional? the t-shirts are like poop butt for sure <laughs> like straight up I'm, poop starting to think, I'm starting to think it's intentional so yeah that's, that's what i'm that, that's what i'm starting to think too so the shirts the shirts are coming out and and it's like hey it's the logo on a red t-shirt and he's like, what? There's like, a, and this week there's a second one and it's red. And he's like, ooh, red. No, yellow. <laughs> yellow. yellow. I'm sorry, yellow. Uh, uh, is, if the, if, next, if they have a shirt come out that says next week is green, then we have a traffic light situation happening. That's mm. true. No. Mm. And maybe that's incorporated in the show. Traffic light shirts, Mad Mike. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And you could cue, you could getting cue those John those. Cena colors. Yes. Oh, well, man. you can also get the shirts in different colors. But can yeah. I get a sweater? Can I get a Firefly Funhouse sweater? At some that point? actually would might. probably be a might. good like. Or can I like? Can, or maybe we'll get a point where you know people already cosplay as Bray Wyatt. Uh, maybe they'll just cosplay. You know, uh, get 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 a Fred Rogers cosplay. Uh, mix it up a little bit in your Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. You just need a sweet. I I want and I don't. I don't think this is going to happen. I want when he comes to the ring to have to change his shoes. Mm. Oh, wow. That'd be a nice nod. Well, I think they're like, uh, the thing with that is I think they got to be careful because if it's a straight up copy of it, like it's too in your face. Yes. Like sort of like what they're doing with the quote unquote Viking Raiders. It's like you didn't have to put Viking in their name for us to realize they're Vikings. Mm -hmm. Like we got it. Like they got the horns. They're yelling. They got shields. They're furry. You know, they got cool names. So like you don't have to throw it in our face for us to understand it. So I hope they don't do that with Bray because it's just like, okay, yeah, we get it. It's like this this type of character. So you have to like, you know, don't shove it in people's faces because if somebody's too stupid to figure it out, they're never going to get it anyway. I'm always worried about that because I, I, there's a, a uh, somebody I listened to that used to work in television. And they said, they said about how they're... <clears throat> How they were playing a certain like a certain demographic, and when they talked to like the channel owners and 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 what they wanted from advertisers, they said we don't want smart people to be watching you. Yeah, as far as the advertisers go, think I about f- the advertisers of Monday Night Raw, right? It's like beer, pizza, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. and chicken. 
I mean, it's not, this is not, and wrestling, sorry, but wrestling generally does not skew to a very intellectual audience. You don't say. I'm, <laughs> you don't, I don't say. <laughs> I mean, not to put what? anybody down out there, <laughs> but the present company or the people, I'm just saying, yeah. I mean. Really? Really? I, I, all right, all right. Some real thumbheads. Some real thumbheads <laughs> in the mix. Real thumbheads watching wrestling. But I, what I'm trying to say. No, I got you. What are you not trying to, to say, Sork? Attempting... Oh, Sork, I don't know if we'll get what you're trying to say. Yes, yeah, Sork. Sork. <laughs> <It's> stupid to <laughs> get it. Oh, only, only the smart ones uh, listen to this podcast. I'm pissing myself on the couch. I don't know where to. <laughs> I'm too stupid. Ah. Uh, I'm pooping uh, myself. Sork, oh. who is this hitting me in the face? <laughs> Who's doing it, Sork? This is a great gag for audio people. I'm <laughs> hitting myself in the face. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm like, wait, what? I was hitting myself in the face. Wrestling fans won't know what you're doing. You, know, you have I, to like say it. The point is, the point no, is, I'm trying to get color geez. hard way. The All right. feeling, All right. the Sword, feeling is, what is your point? In some respects, when they're looking at the show and somebody's saying, "I don't know what a war raider is," you know, they're saying, "I don't want." Like the excuse is going to be, I, "The audience doesn't know what a war raider is," right? Wait, yeah, you guys but they don't know what a Viking raider is either, because Wait. that's not the same thing. No, no, it's not. Mm-mm. Also, <laughs> also, did we talk about on the show the explanation that ra- the Vikings are actually like a a, a translated a word verb. is raiders, yeah. so they are the raider raiders. Yeah, yeah, the raiding they're raiders. More raider, they're more raiders than the Oakland raiders. Somebody in some country is laughing at this. For I'm laughing reasons. at well, this. I mean, we I are too. But... Yeah, we're laughing in America. <laughs> Quote from the Riz. We're laughing in yeah. America. I mean, <laughs> if you also, really if you also that, want to know something, uh, Vikings versus Raiders happens on September 22nd. Yep. Ah, week three. What team do uh, What team do Eric and Ivar pick? Who knows? Actually, actually, uh, Eric probably is going to be... I'm pretty sure Eric is supporting the Cleveland Browns. Uh, yeah. So... If you know the history there. But anyways. Uh... No, Ray Rowe supports the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. It's Eric. Oh, we, know. Oh. We, don't know, we don't know who Eric is. Oh. Eric is from. Eric is a Viking. Eric is a Viking from the Fjord Raider. Nuremberg. Thank you. Thank you for explaining the Viking Raiders to me, guys. Um, Jeez. I mean, we're smart. Or that's because we're, we're the smart. smart. We need to explain. Jeez, um, you brought this on yourself. You, you just took this off the rails. <laughs> yeah, you brought this upon yourself, and it's only the first segment. All right, mm-hmm. I need to collect myself here, so that means I'm going to read something that's in front of my face. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> we got a lot of great content, including a guy that named Ray Rowe over at IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network. Some new. We brought back some old shows, and I don't know why I'm talking like this, uh, but. Uh, it's like, I think I'm rolling into a Paul Heyman. Uh, you should really check this out, guys. So maybe a little Jay Leno. Um, but anyways, we got a lot going on over at wrestling, uh, uh, indie wrestling dot us, indie wrestling dot network. Of course, there's the uh, VODs over at indie wrestling dot us over on our uh, on our. Sorry, multitasking. I don't have a producer. Uh, <laughs> uh we, we we posted a lot of old school uh footage uh, uh in the last few weeks of course there's some larry sweeney stuff going on but we also have been posting uh some old iw classic iwc shows if you want to see the the uh first match of one Britt baker that's uh, uh signed with a aew and should be making an appearance coming up at double or nothing if you want to see a little bit of uh, Shane In Your Face, now known as the Savage Gentleman, that's making a lot of uh, uh, waves out there as well. Uh, if you want to see uh, Dalton Castle versus Luke Gallows, or or here's one I found from uh, uh, Katanning at uh, Penn State Katanning, when uh, Marshall Gambino took on a young Elias in a TLC match that went all mm-hmm. over the building. Also, apparently, um, um, uh, uh, Marshall Gambino sporting some sweet Kevin Nash gear as Jimmy DeMarco lets us know. So a lot of uh, samples we put out there over on the IndieWrestling.us uh, Facebook and YouTube page and those are of course available 
over on our uh, VOD Vimeo page. And you can see those on any device too uh, when you purchase with us. Just download the Vimeo app on your Roku or whatever TV device you may have. A login, all those videos you purchased or rented are there available on your television, not just on your computer, on your phone. Works on all those devices wherever you want to check out some pro wrestling from our friends at the IWC, RWA, Fight Society, and so many other places across Pittsburgh Erie, Cleveland, and West Virginia. Go check out IndieWrestling.us and subscribe for even more for one low price of $5.99 at IndieWrestling.network. Go check all that stuff out. And thank you, everybody, for supporting the wrestling. Toddy! Hey! When you come, you know, I love when you come Hi. on the show. Yeah. The, well, just general. I, I just like hanging out with I you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that, Sork. I appreciate I know. I know you appreciate but it. But I love that when you come on this show, it's like a mashup. Because uh-huh. you bring Thrifty with you. The spirit of Thrifty is with you. Yeah, and, every day. And also a basket of Thrifty. A basket of Thrifty, Ooh. yeah. Um, for those folks, uh, first-time listeners to the show, or if you're watching the live stream, haven't seen me before, I'm Toddy Tondera, and I'm the host of Thrifty Podcast, uh, second-hand shopping for worm people. And uh, with Thrifty, I take a guest... Uh, thrifting every week and we record an episode about our findings so you could find me on apple uh what's that itunes podomatic stitcher where any- all fine podcasts are distributed yeah so subscribe download do that fun stuff um we also got a youtube page where i i post thrift hauls uh we're on instagram so all social media at thrifty podcast you'll find me and my friends and my brand So um, today, uh, as I usually do um, for the Wrestling Mayhem show, is I brought a a wrestling thrift haul. Now, um, a couple weeks ago, just like uh, Mad Mike, but I understand Mad Mike lives a little bit closer to um, where WrestleMania was held, but I went on my first WrestleMania adventure. Um, Yeah, it was uh, pretty cool. I uh, cried a couple of times before the show even started. I was crying on the train on the New way Jersey over. New I, Jersey will do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on the. I was. I was crying on the way over because it's been a dream of mine to be at WrestleMania since I've been a little kid, and I was almost there because I'm like an anxious person, right? So like, I'm not like super excited until like I know it, it's going to officially happen. So when mm. I got on the last train, I was almost there. A little cry, a little cry there, a little cry here and there. But once I was at the show, um, I had my first Wawa sub. Ooh, um, my uh, that was a terrible decision. Um, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but I just thought it was kind of a cool. Like my first Wawa was at my first WrestleMania, so all these WrestleManias that I'm going to go to now, and both W's, which I think is rather appropriate. Yeah, uh, both W's because we're all welcome here, mm-hmm. you Mayhem maniacs. Um. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I got to WrestleMania and I, I have a quick short story and that's, that's how part of this thrift haul um, will kick off. So I went and met my friend Pete. Um, Pete is from New Hampshire. He had a spare ticket. And so Pete and his friends uh, all took one car to MetLife Stadium for WrestleMania. I uh, took the uh, train over because I was hanging out uh, in New York with my friends uh, prior prior to this whole thing. Uh, you know, everything happened at WrestleMania. You know, it was great. You know, we laughed, we cried, yada, yada, yada. When WrestleMania was over, I had noticed, um, and this was like reported everywhere too, but like being in it was crazy. Uh, so the trains were like three hours behind. <laughs> um, the problem was there were so many cars exiting at the same time that even if you drove there, there's no point in getting in the car. So there was, there was buses that couldn't move. There was trains that couldn't move. Cause it was the time of the night where the train flow was like a little less, like a l- little less heavy. Not a lot of Sunday night activity out of that, no. that area. So we were all stuck there and I didn't want to, uh, ask Pete like, hey, could I ride with you? Because, you know, he was nice enough to do all that. And plus, like, he would have to drive me back to Queens, like where I was Oof. staying. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to ask him. You know, it's not my place to ask him. But then right before we left, um, he's like, hey, I got a hatchback. 
um, do you want to pop in the back of the hatchback? And I was like, yeah. He's like, it probably won't be safe because the hatchback, hatchback is very, like, little. But I was like, let's squeeze me back there. So um, I squeeze back in the hatchback, and he's going to drop me off at Queen's. And, um, you know, the door that you, like, throw down, I had to make sure that I wouldn't get hit with it. So we did, like, a test drive. I didn't get hit with it, so it's all good. Now, back when I was in that hatchback, almost puking my guts out, um, <laughs> I there was a box in the hatchback with me. And in the box of that very... Oh, I brought a nerd rope. I brought a nerd rope, everybody. <laughs> A little in case I get in case I get hungry, a nerd rope. You know how how long this podcast runs, so a nerd rope. Yeah, it runs pretty long. <laughs> um, so in that Good thing, we don't have mayhem many of this time. Yes. Yeah. So You'll be in trouble. In the hatchback, there was a cardboard box that was in front of me, and I was sitting crisscross applesauce, kind of all wound up. But there was vintage wrestling magazines in that Ooh. hatchback, and I said, "Hey, Pete." There's magazines back here. He said, take take as many as you want. And I was like, oh, that's wow. awesome. But I couldn't take too many because I was back. I, I had a backpack from Pittsburgh. So I was I had to travel. So I didn't take very many. But um, what I have for you for the first part of the thrift haul was um, vintage WWF magazines. Uh, I talked about some magazines on Thrifty, my, my podcast, but these are totally different. But these are WrestleMania editions. This is uh, Jose Lothario and Shawn Michaels. If you're listening on the audio portion, I have two magazines, one in each hand. Um, in my left hand is Shawn Michaels' WrestleMania moment. Wow. And in my right hand was WrestleMania 13. And uh, that featured Undertaker, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, and Psycho Sid. So these are the two that I'm showing off here. I love, I, love, I love how unsymmetrical unsym- like that WrestleMania 13 cover is. Right, <laughs> right. It's just a, a flame ball. And so there's a flame ball and then four purple, uh, very hyper-masculine heads around that. So that's like those two. Um, the other two I have with me, um, the first one is Calling All Creatures. This is from November of 1995, and it has The Undertaker on a motorcycle. What? We would see that later on, right? Yeah. So it has Undertaker on a motorcycle, his motorcycle gang, in Paul effing Bear right here. Wait, he has a gang? Yeah, it's Undertaker's motorcycle the, gang. Who are the gang? Yeah. <laughs> who are these people? Yeah. Are they in a... The is, dead riders, sort is, is the background... Is one of them Vince Russo? <laughs> oh, man. Is, 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 Adam, and, they're in, Adam, and they're in a cemetery? Is that right? Yeah, they're in a cemetery, so I'm holding us for the live stream camera. And wow. I uh, something I found particularly interesting about this uh, this issue... I put a piece of notebook paper in here. Was if any of uh, you folks on the, the the stream or in the chat remember, um, 1995 WWF SummerSlam, the night the igloo melted. Oh, yeah. so face this the yes. heat. So this was in Pittsburgh, PA, city of mm-hmm. bridges. Um, <laughs> but this was the the pay per view that had the legendary. Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon ladder match. Whoa, Whoa. ladder match. Um, but we all know of the poop butt main event of Diesel and oh, King Mabel. Yeah. It lasted oh, like nine yeah. minutes. It was and, awful. And I believe this is also the SummerSlam. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys out there, that Finn Balor will watch while putting together Legos because it was like one of the first shows that he watched and is like his favorite wrestling show ever. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So he watches Pittsburgh. He watches Pittsburgh. Like, if in, in Mr. Uh, Ireland, mm-hmm. Ireland, yeah, uh, Finn Balor, like, watched the Pittsburgh event mm-hmm. growing up, in uh, growing in his love for wrestling growing up, and as he makes Legos now. And so that was a, a special shout out to Pittsburgh there. Um, the last one I have that I'm showing the camera now is a uh, December 1995 wrestling uh, W uh, World Wrestling Federation magazine, and it says this time there will be a winner. 
It has Kevin Nash, a.k.a. Diesel, and Bret the Hitman Hart fighting mm. over a championship belt. It's a cool picture. Right on the back there. We have karate fighters. Yes! The karate fighters right on the back of the magazine. Which, which you guys had karate fighters in here, and we, we uh, streamed yep. a very special karate fighters yeah, um, battle tournament. That's true. Last time Thrifty was here, we did a live show here. We had a karate fighters tournament, which you could check on Thrifty's uh, Facebook page for the live streams if you want to check that out. Um, so this right here, uh, this article I'm about to show, it's called A Pirate Takes Over Three Rivers. So Ooh. another uh, another uh, Pittsburgh shout out. But it is our friend, Pierre Carl Ouellette. Now known as PCO. So this was Jean-Pierre Lafitte. Before he was PCO, he had an entire other career where he wore an eye patch. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you folks know, but he's, he literally doesn't need that eye. It's like almost not working. It doesn't work. Um, so he wrestled with an eye patch during that stint, but, uh, in, uh, Jean-Pierre Lafitte puts over Pittsburgh big in this article. And, um, you could, uh, I, I brought these, um, you could have one of these cause I like to give you stuff, oh, man. wrestling stuff. So you could have. Um, yeah, we could discuss that later, but you could definitely have whatever one you want. Fantastic. That's... In fact, uh, PCO actually brought back Jean-Pierre Lafitte for uh, King of Trios last yep. year. Nice. Yep, the Riz is on it. That's correct. Um, on my Shikara. Yeah. Um, and then I have uh, an official merchandise catalog. Oh, from 1994 yes. um, that is some star spangled banner the, macho man I mean, on the cover star spangled banner macho man bret hart on the back and inside there's like a doink the clown crush wow. bret the hitman Hart, randy savage so, um sup- is, super not- patriot lex luger remember when he drove yeah. the bus around so mm-hmm. it's like electric stress absolutely 92 93 ish yes no. yeah. uh, and 94 94. Oh, really? Yeah, this 94. was the catalog from 94, Le- but he... Electric Trust was 94. Yeah. Okay. And from this particular catalog, and it's the next piece I have for everybody. Look at that. And this is from the <laughs> local Goodwill outlet. It was something that I found in the past month or so. Uh, what I'm putting over my right hand is a foam pink and black Brett Hitman Heart foam. So for those just listening on the podcast, if you remember like foam fingers with the number one, well, yes. this is a this is a foam heart, and this is from 1994, and this sucker is about fifty sixty dollars. I was gonna say you should yeah that's... you should uh, message that to Zach Ryder. He'll probably give you a good penny yeah. for it. Yeah. So this is the Brett the heart Brett the Hitman heart heart, and at the time um, when I was a, a younger fellow. I was a big Bret Hart fan. Um, did his gestures, did his like his whole eye, like what he had the the sunglasses on, stuff like that. Um, I got spit on one time when I saw Bret the Hitman Hart fight Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels spit on me. I, it, it was at a house show because you were all decked out in Bret. Yeah, I had Bret glasses on, and oh, I no. don't remember exactly it, but my mom would always say like I got spit on, and she was more mad than I was. But apparently, Shawn Michaels spit on me and i was fine with it i would still be fine with it because that's wrestling baby real heat real <laughs> heat real heat real heat that is amazing you had a pro- also Tom was probably really high oh yeah i'm sure he was all pilled out on somas no doubt no yeah. doubt mad mike yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. um i do have one more thing i didn't know if you wanted me to save it if you want me to do it now uh b- b- go ahead do sure. it okay right. okay um, so speaking of um, my history with wrestling and growing up as a wrestling fan, um, in this is something special I haven't shown on anything or really talked about on anything. But um, growing up in uh, nowhere ass Pennsylvania, um, I had an interest in. I'm po- familiar with that area. Yeah, I had an interest in wrestling. Was my number one. And Pokemon was my number two, right? Okay. And so uh, the trading card game was very popular, Pokemon trading cards. Yeah. Um, me and my friend Aaron Coleman, we put together something called 
ACW Mon. And what <laughs> I see the look in your eyes, you know what I'm about to show. Um, so what I have here is a a home folder of my created wrestlers. So my cause. So my Ooh. creator wrestlers trading card game called ACW Mon, and you could literally play it. Um, so I'm going to show some oh, of these to no. the camera. This is great. So what I have here um, is every every card is a piece, a sheet of notebook paper, a sheet of notebook paper. And I drew a wrestler and a weapon associated with the wrestler. Um, I'm just going to go through because there's, gosh, there's like 50 in here. Um, but they had, if you remember Pokemon, they right. had moves. It took energy cards, but I, they were called blood cards in mine. I want to point out for the visual, for the audio listeners, these are drawn on uh, lined, notebook, lined paper. notebook paper. Lined notebook paper. As you do in school. Yeah, so I'm just, I just grabbed a stack off the top and I'll go over them. Um, this one, his name is Severed Skull. Um, he has yeah. 50, 50 hit points, Sorg and friends. He's a good guy. Um, but he's bleeding from the head and there's tax. I, I, uh, wrote tax and then I did a description of everybody. Um, so, uh, severed skull, age 36, name severed skull, weight 292, height 62, his quote, which everybody has a catchphrase and quote, his quote is I'm bleeding. Um, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> excellent quote. Um, and then there's this thing called he is, um, which is like what his whole shtick is. And so, um, he is, uh, a man who busts himself open for fun. And that's wow. what, that's what he is. Um, he's held no titles. Um, I did a lot like my EFED characters, right? Yeah, right. They're saying, uh, Alex so, cars. So did you just make new Jack? Uh, <laughs> Kinda. see mad Mike. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and a lot of the times, too, uh, like you would assume, uh, Mad Mike, like I would see wrestlers on television and I would uh, I would just do them like I'd make my own ACW mon of them. But they were kind of like a rip off of them. Yeah. But some of them were just like. Uh, it, so basically, this is tabletop fire for wrestling. Uh, this Kinda. is this is tabletop. <laughs> uh, so 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 from the chat, Alex Carr is out there in California. It says that you're a former e-fetter without the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, We've been talking about get like circling doing an e-fed at some point. I'm in. Yeah, we were discussing I, I like could, just having you could have a conversation about that. Oh boy. Um, I got. I'll go over a couple of more here. This is uh, going to get real weird if we do that. <laughs> it's about to get real well, weird. Toddy, here. Toddy already has his characters. characters. I already have my characters. I, mean, I have character I, sheets. I have a. I have a character. Jesus, I. I have a fucking character. Um, oh oh man. man, I'm this, not even getting into it. This this one here, um, seventy hit points. He is a bad guy. His name is Bobby Smoothie. Oh. Bobby Smoothie. Um, and Bobby I'm. Smooth I'm putting it up to the camera now. Bobby Smoothie has blue shorts. His shirt is red and green. And his weapon, which is also on the, I, I drew next to him, is a Gateway 2000 computer. <laughs> um, and so age 25, name Bobby Smoothie, weight 230, height 61. His quote, his quote is, the bobbin will be all over. Um <laughs> Oh, that 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 doesn't play in 2019. Um, wow. <laughs> and and he is, um, as you can see the tie-in. He used to make Pokemon cards. He was a Pokemon oh. artist. Oh. Um, I'll go through these a little bit quicker. Turn professional wrestler. Turn professional wrestler. Um, this is Chair Lord. Um, this was a popular card for oh, me. Let me guess his weapon. Wait, wait, wait. Let, me, let me guess his weapon. Yeah, pick is the weapon. It, is it a, a table? Oh, not a table or two by four. Sorry. Sorry to the Riz and Mad Mike. Um, Chair Lord's weapon, if you can get this, because um, I know we're not all smart, you know, uh, <laughs> as we established last segment. Yeah. Chair Lord's weapon is a chair. Oh. And he's like. Shit, I never would have gotten that. He's like a big hunk. Um, he has like red tights with uh, yellow lightning bolts. And what these 
uh, what that purple, like there's purple scribbles all over this one. And I'll hold this one up to the camera. There's purple scribbles all over Chair Lord. And that's to, that's to let you know that Chair Lord is a holographic card. So what? this is a holographic, this is a holographic Chair Lord. Um, I used him a lot. As you can see on the bottom, I always write the credentials. He won multiple belts. But um, age 38, name Chair Lord, weight 297 height 63 really old fed yeah right um and not, not a lot of young talent going on mm, you'll you'll see i'll i'll uh, next one's a young talent um yeah, chair, chair, looking at the picture now chair lord has a lot of chest hair oh yeah yeah he's a big <laughs> very he is a like he is a yeah big beefy hairy guy um beard long brown hair you know, hercules hernandez-esque Right. Yeah, um, his yeah. quote of is his quote, of course, is I'm the king of all chairs, which that's pretty clear. Um, here's one. Here's one. This is also holographic. This is young talent. Um, this is crazy boy Jones. Uh, 90 hit power. He's a tweener. Um, this is a crazy boy Jones. So a uh, holographic right there. And Lazy Boy Jones has a little bit of chest hair. He has an O for a mouth, um, and he pushes around a bloody shopping cart. Crazy Boy Jones holographic. Um, How did that get so bloody? Yeah, I mean that's 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 what you gotta know. Like you need to do almost a whole episode on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just we'll just do like quickly two more. Um, uh, young talent, age twenty two. Name is Money. So he's 22 years old. His quote is, I got the bucks. This is uh, holographic uh, money um, is his name. And he's wearing a green and yellow singlet that says one word money. So that's a uh, money um, on. The, so his weapon is the ice skates. And um, I see that coming. wow, that took a left turn. To be honest, did not see that coming. Right. Uh, I was, I was like, briefcase. Money clip. Right? I assume loaded, loaded money clip. Not a loaded money clip. But that's that's. Or, or he took a bag of coins and just threw it at people. Or a chain wallet. Yo, Mad Mike, Ooh, talk to me that's... after talk, talk to me after the show because you've got yeah. some great ideas. I'm an idea man. Uh huh. And um, so he is. Um, so his character bio, bio is merely a young popular guy that has big bucks. So that's <laughs> Jay McMahon. Yeah, so and then I'll do the last one here that I have because I have so many I could be here all night. I just want to close with the this one. Um, so this was my most powerful ACW mon, um, my most powerful one. It was actually uh, a Charizard ripoff, is what I went with this. Um, so he has 120 HP. His name is Flamethrower, and he's a quote unquote good guy. Um, so we have flamethrower, uh, of course, holographic flamethrower. Um, so what flamethrower has are a yellow and red flame. Well, he has yellow tights with red flames on them. He has uh, orange boots. And then he has sort of like a, an alternative haircut. He has like a orange hair with a, a yellow mohawk up that. And... Uh, Unfortunately, his weapon is an entire uh, steel cage, an entire oh. um, steel cage. And his uh, his uh, quote, um, his catchphrase was fire it up. And he held the eye for some reason. But he was a uh, yeah, two time world champion. He he reigned for months in the Federation. And I also had a belt called barbed wire ropes belt, which is pretty, pretty clear what that was. And he was a four-time champion. And that's just wow. some of these ACW mons. That's so amazing. we could go over more some other time. This I just didn't want to. I think I, I think an EFED podcast some, is in our future. Uh huh. I, I, I should at some point find. I have a whole notebook full of Mega Man robots I used to draw. Love it. Mm. Love it. See, back in my yeah. day, um, so so Simpsons was basically our South Park. Okay. In, yeah. In popularity. So I remember fondly in the third or fourth grade draw, figuring out how to draw Bart Simpson and then drawing <laughs> versions of Bart Simpson. Different as, Barts. As, as uh, you know, Brett the Hitman Hart and various wrestlers of the time. Mm -hmm. did, I, did you call him Brett the Hitman Bart? No, we were not that creative. They were all Barts. 
They were yes. all Barts, so they he couldn't call Bart's. one Bart. Yeah, yeah, they're all Barts, the way, um, and they're drawn the same way. Speaking of, speaking yeah, of Bart. They were all Barts, but it's back when Bart didn't look great. <laughs> like, yeah, like you looked at the drawing, uh, drawing style like on, on Simpsons. Back, back when Homer was saying, "Hey kids, let's yeah. go for frosty chocolate milk." Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. When your parents wouldn't let you watch The Simpsons because it was too edgy. Mm-hmm. My parents always let me watch The Simpsons. We, I was well, one of the only kids in the class that got to. We also didn't have Fox. So. Mm. Ah, oh, did did you have to assume Fox viewing positions? What? Like I'm married with children. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, no, that was us. <laughs> that was us. It was very strange to watch Married with Children and see them in the Fox uh, 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 viewing, viewing position, position? Yeah. while I'm in the Fox viewing f- position, which was a small 13-inch TV that o- that was in the laundry room, which was the only place where I could watch Fox. God and bless try, you. And try to catch my <laughs> fuzzy black and white X-Men cartoons mm-hmm. on Saturday uh, morning. They were all Barts. That's the episode title. They were all, all Barts. Barts. They were all Barts. <laughs> they were all, all Barts. Barts. Can't be broken. And uh, I guess I should say that um, um, for the people who aren't watching yes. the live stream as well, um, I'm wearing a vintage, and um, these were made in 1998 and 1999, I'm wearing uh, a way too big, uh, <laughs> for me at least, uh, the Rock jersey, or a Rock uh, football jersey. Um, and if you remember those, there was Undertaker, there was Stone Cold, there was the Rock. Um, so it's a black shirt. It has a gray uh, Brahma Bull, his uh, logo on very it. It's shiny. It's very shiny. With the Rock. Mm-hmm. And um, the sleeves have number one decal, like number one on it. And each of the designs, I don't have a single crack in any of these designs. It's it's it is, nice. wow. yeah. When he walked in and showed us uh, showed us that it, it was it's pretty impressive. That thing has been taken care of. I I have I have a Triple H jersey somewhere. And I, only, I don't even know if I still have and it. And you found this on a thrift haul. Designs were cracked. On yes. That, all um. I found yeah. So I I found uh the like the Bret Hart heart. Yeah. At a, a a Goodwill outlet, I found this jer- this said jersey at a Goodwill outlet. So I'm assuming that somebody got it, um, either never wore it or I don't know, did something it's you in know, a box somewhere in a box somewhere. But um, amazing, I wore it to WrestleMania and to Sorgatron Media. Wow, yeah, huh? Wow. <laughs> that's the that's the two places. I am honored. That's the two uh, WrestleMania weekend. And then Sorgatron today. You got your Sorgatron Media Studio best on today, Toddy. Uh-huh. Of course, please go check out the podcast. It's a lot of this, a lot of great stuff. I was very excited about the Masters of the Universe and learning about uh, backgrounds on characters that I never knew about. And I am a huge See, I didn't Masters know that. of the Universe fan, uh, He-Man fan. I even am kind of okay with the movie. Okay. Not as okay as I am with like 1985 Transformers cartoon, but okay. I'm just like, you know what? I'll take it. Mm-hmm. It's He Man and He Man on film. I'll take it. Whoever this Courtney Cox girl is, she'll never do anything. But anyways, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, hey, sorry, she's gonna be married to a WCW champion at one point. Oh, yeah. who I met. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. That is weird. And then I just interviewed his niece last week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> David Arquette, cool guy. Love him. Love David Arquette. Um, yeah, but on a recent episode of Thrifty, of Thrifty Podcast, um, I found a uh, vintage uh, from the early 1980s, uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe mm-hmm. action figures, and they were called the Soft Heads. They were Soft Heads. Yes. Is what they were called. I remember the difference. Because they had the hard bodies. Hard they had bodies. the hunk hard bodies with like eight, uh, like... Uh, like an eight pack, yeah. Any of them, They're and ridiculous. then their heads were soft. And I found about like thirteen or fourteen of them in very uh, varying shape. And then we had found out, and I wasn't familiar. Maybe Sorg, uh, you were familiar. Um, when you buy and sell uh, Masters of the Universe characters, um, it, they in the listing you have to put how loose their legs are. Mm-hmm. because the, the band, band the yeah. band and i saw the riz nodding his head yeah the band yeah. inside would um yeah would 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 fuck up eventually we're talking about 1982 here yeah you know? so, <laughs> so i will i will and, say go ahead and and like this is the thing with all these shows like i remember watching like toy hunter on on it and i remember them going there's the skeletor that we have here and it's like i we had those mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But we played with those. Mm-hmm. And they don't look anything like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm like, we would have been so rich. I need to. I need to. I Well, I, well, <laughs> there, there is. I'm pretty rich. Well, I do this for a living. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Podcasting. Yeah. We're all doing pretty good, aren't we, guys? I mean, uh, yeah. 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 Hey, man. Uh, Riz. Um, on our Patreon, by the way. Riz, next time you come over, remind me to bring my bin of uh, He-Man toys into the studio. And I got Castle Grey Skull. Oh, and I got. Oh. And I think more complete than mine. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, that's where I, that was another jealousy point. I was like, he was, he was talking about all the accessories. Like, I don't think I have that on my Castle Grayskull. Yeah. So. so I had like, yeah, there's an elevator. There's like a trap door in cat, and this is the original one too. Um, I still, I still have most of it. I did sell a few of the guys, but if there's anybody looking for Masters of the Universe and looking to to buy some Masters of the Universe figure, I know a certain boy who's selling them on at Thrifty Podcast, Ooh. and it's freaking me. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> I'm going to take a look, see if I have anything Spoiler missing from alert. my collection, mm-hmm. and now I might be contacting Toddy. Awesome. Don't tell producer missy mm-hmm. so anyways guys we got we got we got somebody out there is he pointing at is he trying to bum a cigarette or something oh yeah there's just somebody just pointing me from outside a bit i okay. think that's fine all right it happens out here yeah, that's why okay. that's why i put a camera on the window now so we get that uh point. but he, he already went pie a little bit yeah we point i want to point, point out back. to you guys everybody point back to us Mm-hmm. Uh, from the other side of the internet, and it's like we're touching fingers. That's pretty cool. ET stuff in here. That's right. Let's get ET some ET action. stuff in here. There you go. Uh, but anyways, hey, we got a lot more coming up here. Uh, by the way, breaking news. I just found this out three minutes ago. This was posted. Um, or this is local news. Rhino will be returning to IWC in 2019. Mm. Did he leave WWE? I thought he was still around. He doesn't get work there, yeah, so they probably loan work. him out. I mean, he's just on yeah, his way out. Fine. But anyway, so that's cool. Rhino was uh, a lot of fun here when he was with us uh, a few years ago doing stuff with Tommy Dreamer and everything. So, mm-hmm. anyways, hey, I uh, want to give a shout out to our friends feeding the people that come into the studio here. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza in the area in Beachview, Carnegie, uh, PA, East End, and PNC Park. Again. We have our unofficial, uh, unapproved by Slice on Broadway campaign to help put a slice on your Broadway. If you are somewhere other than Pittsburgh and want Slice, I mean, Slice had one location right up the street here from our studio at Sorgatron Media, and look how they've grown and sprawled across the city. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they own even own the barbershop next door. Thank you for none of the wrestlers uh, reenacting and kicking through that window But in the meantime, by the way. Um, but... Uh, if you are out there, you got a Broadway Avenue wherever you might be. Maybe you're out in the Los Angeles area. Maybe you're up in Seattle or the Kansas City. You got a Broadway somewhere, I'm sure. Take a picture of the road sign. Send it to PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter or one of their other fine social media outlets for Slice on Broadway. I'll link to SliceOnBroadway.com and say, I would like to have a slice on my Broadway and they can scout for locations near you so you can get sliced. We are a global podcast. We realize that. As one uh, member used to say on this show that we are international superstars. He was saying that back in 2006, granted. Um, and we might have been one of three wrestling podcasts at the time. But anyways, yeah. uh, but <laughs> in the meantime, uh, please go check that out. Let's get Slice globally expanding to your neck of the woods so that that map of where people listen to this show matches that map of where you can get slice on broadway uh and we'll help them with that at least thank you for to them for supporting the wrestling mayhem show we'll be back after this message with the big the big question sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com i'm very I'm very curious. listen Nothing like, in this path of the show is going to be about Sonic the Hedgehog trailer. As much as I do like, really want to see Jim Carrey as Dr. The, Rob- Robotnik. The first and half, and like, this is not the big question. We are back, Riz. This is not what we're doing. We're not going to talk about Adventure Endgame for this half of the show like we did like last night. That's not a, you know, all wrestling. It's all wrestling all the time. All wrestling. All wrestling all the time. Toddy is with us. He is representing. The, he's representing the Thrifty Podcast. Whether it's all thrifty, all the what time. up? What up? What yes. up? What up? What up? Good to have you with us. 
Uh, I think you're eating that nerd rope. I love the nerd rope. I busted open the nerd rope for the second (laughs) half of the show. (laughs) Just leaving snacks for yourself. Past toddy was really good. The future toddy. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm always leaving myself snacks in my little uh, my little things I carry around. Ramen. Remember that dirty fork I brought to your studio by accident? Yeah. yeah. Today, a little treat, a nerd rope. There you go. And of course, the nerd Riz. Rope, and Mad Mike with us on the line. What's that? I, I go fast. You go fast. He, he doesn't even look like an egg. <laughs> Well, at the end it does. At the end, yeah, it there's, no? a, there's a picture of him more like egg like that's been floating around too. Like I don't yeah. think they there's a lot that can happen, man. Just I mean, just think I'm, of the first I'm, five minutes of I'm, Endgame. Oh, come on. Really, uh, anyways, that's not what the show's about. It's not what the shows, but damn it, we're talking about wrestling. And I got a I big question for you. Like. And we're gonna have a big question. I love I love this energy from you, Sword. I hope the big question I love it. Uh lives up to it like Endgame. Uh I really <laughs> doubt it. This is not okay. a two- this is not a one point two billion dollar uh, uh, big question. I haven't seen it yet, so we'll see it yet. Um, sure, I, you can tell it short. And I'm sure there's versions know. of this that we've done before. But uh, inspired by Toddy, I hope this is the exact same question I did last time you were here. Uh, but you know, I, you know, there's some crazy stuff that WWE's put out. Yeah, in merch, right? They put mm-hmm. they put things on everything. Right. It's pretty crazy. I mean, even these days, you'll find something where like, wow, WWE sold a license for this. Mm-hmm. And you're like, maybe they didn't. Uh, like that very Mysterio statue we we're talking about on the break. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, so over the years, and many of us have had the magazines and the sh- WWE shop dot coms over the years. What is the weirdest WWE F WCW merchandise? <laughs> Pro wrestling. I mean, indie wrestling is doing something weird. As somebody was just telling me about. Uh, what is the weird. weirdest thing that you may have? <laughs> mm-hmm. Riz is thrown back to uh, when uh, Toddy, you brought a couch full of uh, buddies. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I brought wrestling buddies. buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got his. Got, we got this original. Like it, it's it. It was from I forget when it was. Do you, it is, is the Hulk Hogan Wrestle Buddy has got him Hulk Hogan Wrestle Buddy is around his neck. Do you have any that aren't racist or just the racist one? <laughs> just the racist one. Funny, okay, I'm just curious. Story. I'm just funny curious. Story. We had we had we we still have the Hulk Hogan one, mm-hmm. but also we had the Ultimate Warrior one. Okay, so just oh, racist. homophobe, oh, nice. oh, racist and homophobe. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Good job. We don't have the Ultimate Warrior one anymore. I, yeah, man. Yeah. No, I have I, I have the Hogan one too. I was just fine. yeah. I know. I know. So do you just get rid of them when they die, Riz? No, mm. the, the, the Ultimate Warrior one actually like it was it, it, I I only found this one. Like we only found this one, and I think we just get we just got rid of the Ultimate Warrior one like a few years after mm-hmm. my brother stopped watching wrestling because these were his stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, originally uh but i've kept this around i've put it on my head for this show many times um now it's around my neck uh but i, I want to say we had more than two i want to say we had the boss man as well okay that's a rare one so if you still have that oh no we don't yeah. have that one this is the only one man and i wish i did have the boss man one now Shoot. Jeez. uh but if I can answer your question, Sword. If you can, with with Buddy Hulk Hogan ringing you around the neck, there mm-hmm. it is it is very warm now. Um, but <laughs> one of the things I remember when I was a kid was looking in those in those catalogs and seeing the caricature body of of like Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. I think Doink was on there, like the the body of of those wrestlers in a caricature caricature form, leaving you with the head and the arm. Yeah, leaving with the head, but it, it, that that picture always reminds me. I, I always wanted one for some reason. As the Brett, as a big Bret Hart fan as well, uh, I really wanted to be Bret Hart. Mm-hmm. Really wanted to be like, have his stuff around, and that was one of the ones I really wanted as a kid. And I think I got the Shawn Michaels one. If you're talking and about, I, I think uh, you're talking about the the caricature. So they're just like a small body and like a bigger head. 
Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. I I'm looking at that right now. In this nineteen <laughs> yeah. in this 1994 catalog, I'm you looking. Know, you know, hold that up. I'm uh, looking at. I'm looking it's at like, that. It's like a drawing kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's I drawing. bet Waller did them. I think I just saw this. I think, mm-hmm. I, I'm looking through Savage Stash for a little bit of inspiration. I think I might have just seen that as well. Mm-hmm. So those were always great. Um, so, you know what to get me now. Mm-hmm. I know what to get you now. Uh, let's see. I'm going to throw this on the chat. So there, I think this is the same thing you just saw over there, right, Toddy? It's yeah. Gonna, it's going to be on your left. Um, yep 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 yeah 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 yeah, yeah yep. that is it yeah, yeah. and it's, by the way you can get the it. doink the clown one on the savage stash for 110 dollars right now hey oh, geez. hey okay. yeah. hey not bad this is getting out i think you wallet. can actually pay less for doink the clown to appear at your house oh, yeah man. well you well, the, the, oh, not, not, uh, not, um, not the doink the clown not the doink but a doink oh it's and, not hard uh, there was a bunch of not them. the alabama doink as well alabama doink or it's no there's no there's been a lot of doinks in indie wrestling so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right uh what about you mad mike you've seen your share of uh crazy stuff out there oh boy um well, ordinarily, this is where I would pull out my um, my Sky Too Hottie stuffed worm. Mm. Um, that's kind of cool. What? A stuffed worm? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I'll bite on it's that. A pl- it's a plush worm that looks like Scotty Too Hottie. That's cool. It's great. It's it's actually still in really good condition. Um, with the hat? Hmm? Oh, yeah, with the hat. Wow. With the hat, the spiked, the spiked hair. Mm-hmm. Um. But I'll I'll go to uh, one of my favorite uh, figures that I have. It's a figure of Shawn Michaels dressed as Hulk Hogan. Whoa! They made a no. figure. They made a figure of that. Yeah, they made a figure of that. It, it's it's one of my favorites from the from the um, fake Larry King segment that they did on Raw. When oh, is Hogan it from and, that? Hogan and Michaels are feuding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they did it from that. It's pretty great. Mm. It's pretty great. Yeah, I, I remember those because they were like uh, ripping it. Like WWF was after WCW and then WWF did like old like mocks and then. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 not no. not um, not not that. Mm-hmm. No, not not this billion, not billionaire stuff. This oh, was in 2000, this was in 2005. Oh, might be. OK, when when uh, Hogan and. Shawn Michaels were feuding. Yes. Okay. Was like that the... Hogan? Hogan. Yeah. Hogan had just been on Larry King, and he was talking about wrestling. Okay. So then Shawn Michaels dressed as Hogan, mm-hmm. and that's and what started talking. Is that yeah. the is that the match where uh, Michaels oversells um, Hogan's offense? Everything. Everything. Um, it, it, it's where Shawn Michaels actually becomes Ricochet because that's how much he bangs <laughs> around the ring. Mm, great callback. Ricochet, quite the cutie. Or call forward. <laughs> yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking, again, I'm looking through for some inspiration for my own answer because I, I know there's like something's in the back of my head from like one of those WWE, you know, well, like what you have there, like the mm-hmm. WWF catalog from like 1990 or something. Um, but in the meantime, uh, <laughs> some of these. I'll get to these. I want to get you guys this first. Tina Keys, uh, uh, Junior has a minifigure of CM Punk as the Ice Cream Man from Slam City. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Those were very interesting. It was basically just like every all the wrestlers got day jobs. Um, mm-hmm. I think there was a crossing guard. Uh, you're like, oh yeah, at, at okay. Point. I remember that. Our um, truth was a zookeeper, I believe. That's right. Uh, let's see. Podner says golden mel- quote golden medal ticket from WrestleMania three picked up at the closed circuit show. Uh, yeah. at uh, Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Wow, that's, well, that's so, really cool. So that's... when they had the closed circuit showing of WrestleMania three, you had a uh, quote golden medal ticket from WrestleMania. 3. Oh, that's, that's, that's got a golden awesome. ticket. That's, that's pretty got unique. Toddy, you've seen some stuff out there. I've seen some stuff out there, no doubt. But if I had to think of uh the like the most unique thing that i've ever seen somebody sell it goes back like a long time um if we want to even talk like locally we could talk locally Mm -hmm. um back in my town that i grew up in uh growing up so this isn't like a heavy hitter or anything that's like a well-known name but uh 
across the street from the bar, they would run, um, I believe it was PWX at the time. Okay. I, this was like, I was probably like 15, 16. Um, there was a, a guy there that, um, he had like his tights were too small or something. And, um, if people, you could see like his jock strap through the tights and like there was, you know, people like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we could, you know, we could see your dick, uh, many, many <laughs> versions of that. And so it like got over like enough that after the show, he came out and sold his jock strap that he used uh, for $23, the, $20, $23 or something like that. I think that's very pre Joey Ryan. Yeah, so yeah. that was like back back woods. Um, so somebody bought that, but they used to give out like I had for a while, um, like you bring the bring the weapons matches, and I have like uh, I probably still have it um, somewhere, but it was like an old dresser drawer, and it had like people signed it from the show, and it said like mm-hmm. PWX on it, and I brought it, but yeah, we used to like. My dad used to get real drunk and take me down the PWX, and we used to throw stuff in the ring. Mm-hmm. We could do all that stuff because the bar was right across the street. I, so this is uh, this is outside of things, but just because I discovered this, because we're you know we're working with Fight Society and and kind of figure out what they have sure. going on over there, right? Um, I finally hooked up an old Roku somebody left here, um, gift to us uh, when they upgraded. And Pro Wrestling Network is on on the Roku, and it's it, and it's and, and there's a lot of our background stuff around that. And there's like another Pro Wrestling Network that's the same people, but it's not connected. Mm-hmm. We're trying to fix that. Um, but uh, if you go download that on Roku, there's some free stuff on there, and there's a lot of and it, maybe some people saw a tweet on my personal tweet th- Twitter this week. Um, there's a lot of PWX television from. Like I was watching a show from 1997. Holy and cow! I, so I, I, I was probably I was you, you were like there or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I who knows? But I there was like a like an eight month span where we would go, and there was like a monthly show. Yeah, yeah. That me and my, me and my dad at, would go at, like the was mall like the or thi- something, right? Yeah, that yeah. was like the thing. So, so you never know. I could so be on there. Any of you guys can go download this um, if you're kind of curious. And there's some like the first one I called up was one with our friend Shirley Doe. Or we've done some shows. He's been on this show. Uh, really great guest and long time. And we, I always say Pittsburgh legend. He's been around. 1997, he's there. Uh, looks a little different. Still has the X on his head. And for whatever reason, he was stealing other people's gimmicks and is dressed as Jenny Gregory, golden boy Denny Gregory, and dancing around. And if you watch a Shirley Doe match, that's pretty <laughs> crazy. Um, I have to dig it's... up some old T-shirts, too, because I oh. bought some PWX T-shirts when I was younger. Somewhere there's like two or three. You love this. There's. Yeah. Um, I feel like it was BC Steel that did this. And I'm hoping I'm not breaking any any rules here. I think he was the one that did it. It could have been somebody else where they had somebody was making quilts and they took somebody's old wrestling shirts, like indie shirts, WWE oh, shirts. Oh, okay. And they I made remember them, this. And they made them. You were there for this. They made it into a yeah. quilt. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, hey, I know that guy. I know that guy. But there was this like, who the hell is Crusher Hanson? I didn't know at the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as, as like I'm discovering who Paul Atlas is and we're going to try to get him on the couch and talk to him about his career because I'm. I'm working with him. I'm just like, I've heard of you, but I don't know anything because you were never mm-hmm. in the promotions in the last 12 years that I've been at, right? And I don't know this history. Sure. Like, like there is a there is a Sorg did not discover independent wrestling in the Western PA area until 2006. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, this is all, like, some weird gray area for me, and I want to discover it, mm-hmm. you know? So, it's... Well, if you see somebody that looks like me, only a child, it's... <laughs> It's me because I look the same. In fact, I have a similar haircut to when I did. Uh, I brought back, uh, yeah, a similar haircut to what I used to have in the '90s. So it's probably me. You'll say you'll see me. Oh, that's great. It's either this or a bowl cut is what you'll see me on there. From as... from the chat is uh, Jack Phelps. He says, keeping with the thrifty theme, theme, he found a bunch of WWF and ECW tapes at Savers for a dollar. Yeah, um, wow. Jack Phelps, known friend of mine. Um, uh, he he's pretty hardcore himself. He's uh, he might actually train to be a wrestler in Philadelphia. Um, he's pretty hardcore as it is. He fell off his bike the other day and he posted on social media with his nose all like messed up, and oh, it was no. so cool. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you, Jack he's Phelps. Hardcore. He's hardcore. Yeah, for he's sure. He's hardcore. Uh huh. But mm-hmm. he lives down in Tucson, so that's where Savers is. 
So I, 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 I again, kind of poking at some inspiration here. I, I, there was a comment. I recently this week finished the uh, DX Hall of Pain speech, and there was a point where I think, uh, I think Triple H said, like, how many of you got uh, got suspended for school for wearing one of our T-shirts, basically? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I'm going through and I'm looking at some of this stuff. Yeah, they were pretty lewd. Um, there was a a ten strangest WWE merchandise items, one of those stupid clickbaity yeah. things. Uh, and there's like one from Trish Stratus that just says "blow me dot dot dot." I was like, "What the hell? <laughs> yep. What are we doing, WWE?" Um, I mean, we all know what Yikes. we all know what APA stands for. Yeah, that's right. Always, Always pounding, pounding ass. ass. Always pounding yeah. ass. Yeah. Always um, pounding ass. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, that that, that uh, was stated on the t-shirt. That was a t-shirt. Holy cow! That Always pounding t-shirt. ass. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm funny. buying it. We, <laughs> buying we come it. to learn later that was basically just Bradshaw's hazing ritual. Oh yeah. my god! I mean, so, you could wear that at all kinds of different events. Always pounding uh, <laughs> ass. I need that shirt. Holy! And cow. also, I was looking through here for uh, on the same site, Savage Stash. Damn, they should be a sponsor. Um, mm-hmm. Love those guys over there. But uh, there's this very uh, provocative uh, uh, Mar- Marlena uh, Gold Dust uh, uh, shirt where he's uh, oh yeah, where he's holding the boobies. Um, the one with the cigar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like she, she's holding the yeah, cigar. Was... He's holding her. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that guy. Kicked out of school. Well, like, you remember they had the <laughs> that got magazine? you kicked out of school. Uh, that, that, was on the, yep, yep. that was on the Raw magazine. Oh, I remember that was that was from the Raw magazine. I mean, Raw I mean, magazine from were like what I censored picks. <clears throat> yeah. What I think is on the from what I heard. Is oh wait, it's one hundred twenty dollars and it sold out. Yeah, of course it did. His boobs. Yeah, because well, I mean, you know someone's oh you're you doing know someone's you're, gonna wear that to double or nothing. Doing <laughs> yes. By the way, I will get to the double or nothing. I, I do yeah. want to make, mention something on that in a moment. But in the meantime, want to give a shout out to some other... Sub- uh, wait, are we doing that? We shouldn't be doing really? that. Hold on a second. Wait, I'm in the wrong <laughs> part. Occupy Pro Wrestling. I don't have any merch on me. I don't have any merch on me because I'm wearing thrifty stuff tonight. Thrifty, get Roach t shirt. Right, Buy Roach. one of those. ToddyTondera.com. Oh. Click on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but April is National Autism Awareness Month, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is looking to support a great cause. This is the last day of it. Damn it. Uh, when you buy OPW merchandise at whatamaneuver.net and uh, shop.occupyprowrestling.com in the month of April, 100% of Proceeds go to Asperger and Autism Network. Check out aane.org for more info on the wonderful organization. And we'll hopefully see you in the shop. Some good stuff there. I wore the Wrestling Is t-shirt here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and then we had fun with uh, posting notes with that, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other stuff, other great stuff going on. And I know we got a few people walking out of the door with some of the Occupy Pro Wrestling swag we got from uh, from uh, uh, uh hanging out with alex here uh, earlier this month in la and uh hopefully hanging out hopefully around some wrestling shows again this month uh when we head out there too but go check that out over at occupyprowrestling.com right in the front page you can go check out the merch and uh even if we're past it for the great cost good stuff out there please support occupy pro wrestling over there too mm-hmm. so yeah speaking of double or nothing i don't know how we, you guys are keeping up on this but i saw an amazing video uh, the mm-hmm. headline was, and I posted this for you guys in the group too. Um, the headline was about how uh, Cody was calling out uh, Triple H and calling him a muscle bound, uh, you know, a bodybuilder, uh, having no DQ matches, and, and how that's better. How is that better than Okada and uh, Omega? No, wait, no, that's wrong. Other way. Omega Okada? Yeah, it, no, it, it, it was uh... Omega and which one do they say? Yeah, it was. A, no, it was a mega no, it's a yeah. Mega yeah, mega mega yeah, that was the right match. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I, I thought you Kushida's said Kushida's debuting this week, so I got. I Kushida think you said Kenny mind. and Okada. Kenny and Okada. Thank you. So yeah, it's still Thank right you. though. But anyway, just the other but other I think name. More than that, it was just a great a great promo. Um, you know, talking about you know his you know the prodigal son, the Bible version of that, the the whoring that uh, Dustin did, uh, you know, referring to Gold Dust and, and all the other things that he did. Uh, trying to follow in his father's uh, uh, footsteps, and uh, you know how how you know everybody laid the path with the Attitude Era in the 2000s, but it seems like you know they they've been held like, basically anybody that could do anything has been held back. Um, a tremendous promotion. Uh, gave a good call to CM Punk on there, a very CM Punk style promo, but Cody's way of doing it. 
Um, this is the stuff that, you know, and they're doing, and, and I saw there's a whole series of these that they're doing with these promos. Um, yeah, those Road to Double or Nothing there, ones. There's, those are amazing. There's a lot mm. of great creativity and chance to speak. Um, as, as many of you know that I am not a fan of four-minute promos. Uh, plus sometimes when the Andes, right? Um, especially when, you know, a lot of people can't carry something like that. But knowing that, like, I was enthralled for, I think, three minutes of this, of just Cody in a camera, in a black background, talking to me. This is the kind of stuff that uh, can get me interested for for something like this. And uh, if this is what they're doing for a pay-per-view with no television, which they did for All In, to be honest, they, yeah. they, they got that basically on the same basis. Uh, you, you can say with All In... You can definitely give a little bit of credence to the support they did get from Impact and ROH, which I don't think is going to happen in the same way this time mm. uh, because of all the cards on the table. I did not mean to make a reference to cards <laughs> for Double or Nothing, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's, too, it, it, it's just all hanging right there, isn't it? Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I thought I thought it was an interesting way to build this up because, like you said, with AEW, they'll probably have TV in the fall. Um, not sure where that's ended up. I think it's a promotion that has Vince McMahon like scared, which is cool because mm-hmm. I don't I don't know that I rem- and I've always watched wrestling. I don't know that he's ever been as scared as he has now. Maybe, but I don't think so. There, there's uh, like because you you could argue uh, uh, TNA, the former Impact. Um, that they were getting some guys and they, and you weren't allowed to say TNA and WWE promos, Mm -hmm. but he like legitimately wasn't worried about it. But I think with this AEW, he's literally people who say like, I want to quit WWE. He's saying, just sit at home and we'll pay you because you're not quitting. Right. They're in, they're they're in the, they're in the power position right now. Right. Uh, to, to, to do anything like this. And, and I don't think, I, I, I don't think that WWE is quite shaking their boots. Mm-hmm. No, they're not. But they're, in, they're, by they're, any they're, means. No, not even. So close. why don't they let their talent go then? Why don't they let them why go? Why would you? Why would you? Yeah, yeah. Because they asked, they asked to be released. Fire them. Well, I, yeah. you're, no, they're I, paying them. Well, why would, if you don't think they're shaking in their boots, why are they sitting at home getting paid? I think it's a, I think it's a reaction to mm-hmm. uh i mean i think i think it's a reaction to them leaving i i yeah you and, know, and plus they do they are on a contract to, and we used to do that back in the day and look what happened with lex luger mm-hmm. that's, that's not that's not being scared mm-hmm. that's not that's just giving up your assets yeah that's business at that point i mean yeah, they mentioned it at wrestlemania that brock <clears throat> i mean it's kayfabe but they they mentioned las vegas at wrestlemania have but they that's ever UFC. That's UFC. Mm, okay. okay. No, they they mentioned that in terms of Brock Lesnar. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Heyman said Heyman. that Las Vegas is where Brock is ultimately appreciated. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that and, and, and that Dana White, work. Dana they White had, has been uh, in the audience, so there's a little bit of a uh, nod there, I think. Yeah, it, uh, it had nothing to yeah. do with AEW. No, but there was more. Of course, he couldn't get around it, but of course, it was the context too with Billy Gunn and the DX speech. Where uh, uh, and I take this as nothing but good fun when Triple H says, "Piss off, Vincent. He'll buy that piss ant company you're working for." Mm. Like that is just, I mean, that's just people doing a thing. I, I don't take that as, I mean, yes, it's a slam. I mean, let's be honest about it. Mm-hmm. But I think it's more fun than anything. Um, well, it, it's also tri- It's also because what's going to happen to Triple H if he says that? That is true, and there was nothing. a lot of that. Absolutely. And that's nothing. why Artie Evans now, doesn't have a job Stevie anymore. Ray said that, if Stevie Ray said that, Vince would walk up and take that Hall of Fame, yeah. Hall of Fame uh, ring away from him. Uh, step Artie back Ev- step back Artie. a moment. Step back a moment. Yeah. Uh, Riz, Artie Evans, which I don't think we've had, which, uh, sh- I don't think we've had on the we have not show. Had on the show. No, 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 no. But he was. Uh, no. He he's known by others in the 80s. I didn't realize he worked for WWE, but he is he, known to most of us as... Archibald Peck. Yes. Also known as Marchy Archie, but also known as Mix Marshall Archie. Uh, also known as the Lonesome, Lonesome and Handsome. I forget what his name is. Uh, but yeah, he worked for Shikara for a lot, a, a whole bunch of characters in Shikara. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the Hall of Fame, he was the one who, quote unquote, might have wrote some lines that Bret Hart said that weren't uh, 
liked by Vince McMahon. Okay. Because he used Vince McMahon a mm. lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and which was funny got, because they which, made fun of that fact later. That is like, you cannot thank Vince, right? Yeah, you can't say so, his name. Yeah. You can't do this. You can't yeah. do that. And yeah. then he, nobody gave a shit that DX said it. Yeah, yeah. Nobody cared that anybody else said it. But hey, it's this, this lonesome writer over here, get him out. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's that weird thing where... And also, by the way, he, by the he, way he's, he's also willing to fight Orange Cassidy for food. Oh, that's good. That's good, yeah. since he doesn't have a job now. Uh, also, I believe he admitted uh, on Twitter somewhere uh, that he quit because he knew he, said he, he was going he to be he fired. Mm-hmm. So he just like, I know it's going to happen. I'm out here. Don't worry about it. So he quit like the night before WrestleMania. Um, so, and that's, uh, you know, we can get to, you know, I know we kind of talk about these in the frame of wrestling, but I like to reframe them as this is a corporate structure issue. So <laughs> that is an employee you, issue in the entertainment industry versus pro wrestling mm-hmm. issues. Uh, but uh, I, I think that's, that's a, a, one example of all that. Do you see somebody like, uh, somebody, let's say Dean Malenko. Mm-hmm. Who just left WWE? By the way, is please going... somebody book Dean Malenko and Mike Quack and Bush. Make that happen. Quack, yes. put that out there in the world, please. Dean, Dean, Dean is physically not able to wrestle. Oh, oh. that's a shame. Yeah, well, the Quack wasn't for the longest time either. Oh, yeah, throw both in yeah. seats. Yeah, I, 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 don't I think, think Dean is on that like Edge and Christian Schneid. Where he oh, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, um, but do you think guys like Dean Malenko? Uh, Artie Evans, something like those smaller backstage people mm-hmm. are going to go to places like a, or going to go to AEW. Arn Anderson. Or, Arn Anderson, yeah. I was just Arn Anderson. Uh, but do you see him going to AEW or even Impact Wrestling? If you pay them, pay them enough, they'll go yeah. anywhere. Yeah, and it's yeah. the yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Hey, well, also, I, anybody, anybody, um, how many people here have worked for a company for? a let's say five plus years mm-hmm. right i mean you know for, for us to have uh you know or even just three years two years like after a while it gets a little like uh, you know and no matter how big and great wwe is it's still a job and some people are just going to get tired of it's also the most traveled job too so you're gonna to, get burned out yeah you're gonna get burned out nobody can do that forever how bruce pitchard has been fired or quit how many times by now uh, over the last 40 years. Has he currently worked there again? I think he's back. Cool. Um, I knew he was back like some months ago. Yeah. But I don't know if he quit again. So, so yeah, who knows, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. Can we get a, uh, is Bruce picture uh, currently employed by WWE.com? Uh, <laughs> and uh, then you just refresh so, it and it just says yes it. or no. Uh, yes. It was like, no, go listen to his podcast. Uh, <laughs> he needs money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, I, uh, <laughs> But uh, no, I, I see I see that certainly happening. It depends on their reason for leaving. If they're just like, oh, done with this. I'm going to do something else because there's a lot of options on the table for these guys. Let's be honest. I, I want to start a school. I'm going to do this. Maybe I'll do this over here. Maybe I'll work with this promotion uh, that does not work four nights a week, uh, five nights a week uh, all over the country and mm-hmm. world. Um, I like seeing my kids. You know, how old are, my, are the kids? Well, I think that's, that's uh, a lot of um a, why a lot of people are looking at AEW because they mm-hmm. have to work less dates um sometimes it's more yeah. money so some of those ex WWE who want out for whatever reason whether mm-hmm. they're just like Dean Ambrose for example wants out cuz he's burned out he didn't like his hokey character didn't care about WrestleMania didn't need mm-hmm. that he just didn't care and he's a smart guy he saved a lot of his money mm-hmm. um and he wanted to get away from the business but if AEW sent, like send like literally millions of dollars I think you could change your mind. Like, I think a mind could be changed. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I could say that I'm burned out doing something, but if somebody gives me a million dollars to do it again, yeah, I'm not burned out anymore. Turns out, money. I mean, a lot fine now. Yeah, a lot can be said for, um, let's say, even you know, TNA back in the day where they were filming like what once a month in in Florida, and then and then hey, guess where Christian lives, Tampa. Mm-hmm. You know, guess where Jeff we're Hardy is Jeff time. Hardy's thing. Like, it's just like everybody just kind of like, RVD, oh, yeah. I just need a small commute and I get to get paid to be on TV a pretty decent rate to do so. Let's do I it. I don't have to do that bullshit I did with WWE and the tour. 
Like, no, that is that is a huge thing. Like, mm-hmm. guys, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, I tra- but I travel for a whole eight that eight work trip. Model- Dude, I, I travel for a whole eight work trips a year. That gets taxing. I yeah. cannot imagine what it is like to literally live every week of that lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? Like the toll that these people have and that they can perform, you know, what are, we're judging one way or another every Monday or Tuesday night, it, it plus pay-per-views, mm-hmm. plus house shows. To do that on that, I barely function after four days in one place, mm-hmm. you know? So it, I barely it, function. So, <laughs> you yeah. barely function just here in Pittsburgh. I, I barely function waking up every day. So. Just getting here hey, was a toll. Remember just when getting that 20, here. Like, remember when we were talking about how I'm like up here in the first few minutes? Mm-hmm. Now I'm all the way down here. Like I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even functioning. I don't even hear you right now. That's it's pretty like, good. It's great yeah. for a podcast. Considering yeah. it's a podcast, my man, you're doing great. Over there. <laughs> I'm doing you're doing awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, just managing those great. expectations, right? Yeah. So uh, hey, he said it. He said it. He said I'll, I'll be I'll be kicking for a while, and then towards, <laughs> the, towards the end, carry me. Towards yeah, the end, carry me. Yeah, just I carry me through. That was gonna happen. Hey, oh, gotcha, geez. gotcha, I, man. Uh, I also want to mention, I don't know how many of you guys, everybody keeps telling me, have you watched Dark Side of the Ring? Have you watched Dark Side of the Ring? I watched the three episodes available at the moment of uh, Dark Side of the Ring on uh, Viceland. Viceland? Mm -hmm. Lots of good stuff on there. If you download the Viceland app, log in with your cable subscription or your close relatives, um, you can watch those. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe the most recent episode is also available to everybody. Uh, it's on is on on demand already so on demand like, all that kind of stuff it's in a bunch of places uh, uh uh and i'm sure there's other sources too uh but anyways great stuff uh if, if anybody knows um when you when you say hey can you you want to watch another 45 minute thing about the montreal screw job and we say fuck you uh because <laughs> you know that i worked no. on montreal theory and i don't want to hear no. anything else about it right um but uh, but but i loved their telling of it even up but to Scott Hall telling you, even it. the Scott Hall version of it is interesting. The Earl Hebner part, the even down to Jim Car- Carnett and Vince Russo, two men that I have experienced in person, uh, including two a, men that have also blocked me. Yeah, two people have blocked Riz. Uh, uh, I, I've been around to more than I should have. And I think I, I had a car ride from the airport with Vince Russo once. Uh, <laughs> and how uh, many times do you say, dude? Yeah. Super- uh, no, it's more bro. Bro. It's bro. 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 Let me tell you about Vic Venom. Uh, <laughs> actual sentence. Uh, as, as I lose my voice, I do a better Vince Russo, I feel. Uh, we'll see how that plays back in the morning. But uh, uh, the, the credits, seg- if nothing else, the credits segment at the end where they're just digging into each other is fantastic. I think in general... Uh, I'm just done with that. I'm just done it with is. that. Yeah, yeah I'm just again, like over a, it. Yeah. This is a good retelling. Yeah, it's like who cares, right? Yeah, but it's new to somebody because it's on Vice on on TV. Right? Vice is great though. Yes. Vice like Vice Vice does a lot of good stuff. It's um, the best is a better retelling than WWE did. <laughs> they, I just watched a Vice thing today where they were ha- had a off topic, but they were they were uh, experimenting on monkeys and they were documenting people experiment on monkeys in labs. Mm-hmm. Got to check it out. It's pretty wild. That's I, on that Vice. Well, I got that app now, so That's I'll go check Vice. it out. What's up, Monkey Doc? Let, let's uh, let's wait till that Vice money comes in, right? Just <laughs> Vice, your Monkey Doc. I loved it. <laughs> That's it. I loved it. That, that Call was, me or something. Text me, email me. Macho and Liz. There was a really. Good, I love how they did kind of the recreations, and they have this kind of obscured like look of Macho and Liz, and you just like they, it just looks just like them. Uh, the way they shoot it, uh, even and I did not know much of the story of uh, the, the the death of Brody Lee. Mm, uh, Bro- no. I mean Brody. Bruiser mm. Brody. Yeah. Bruiser Brody. Thank you. Bruiser Brody. Brody Lee. Somebody else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and still alive and Brody, kicking on the Indies. Brody Lee is, I believe, still getting paid by WWE. Sure. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Currently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he has no choice. <laughs> His no Twitter choice. Profile yes. is, uh, his DMs are fucking open. That's way. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Anyways, also a big Pe- Penn supporter. His very Penguin supporter. Uh, but anyways, uh, Luke Harbour we're talking about. Not in the documentary that died. That one. That it was it. The, it was uh, uh, Bruiser Brody died in Puerto Rico. Uh, a lot of it is the retelling by mm-hmm. uh, Paul. Not Paul Atlas. Damn it. At, 
uh, Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas. Thank you. No relation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I, I again didn't know much of that story. Uh, interesting uh, to look at that. And again, Tony Atlas, another guy. You know, a lot of you saw a, a different side of him from um, uh, Legends House, Legends and, or yeah. if you were at WrestleCon where he was buying cards from Joe Dabrowski's table. Uh, I, you know, so it was interesting to see that emotional side of him as well. And uh, like I, I really got interested when I first saw like people getting upset about Carlos Colon getting in the Hall of Fame. I'm like, why is everybody so upset about this guy? And then I started looking into it, and then there were these videos about Carlos Colon and how he basically just put out a, a hit on a guy mm-hmm. because he didn't like him, yeah, or because of. He, the guy didn't do it do the job mm-hmm. and i'm like I, I i got into this story because of that and yeah. I, I was really intrigued by the storytelling in that it was a, it was some expert storytelling and the and the bruiser brody one is, is actually narrated by mick foley <clears throat> uh yeah. mick, mick foley so which is adds a whole dimension to it too um you know to the point where i guess it's a spoiler a little bit if you want to watch it but again i think you can read a wikipedia page for this yeah, um, no. Yeah, you shouldn't I mean, know. yeah. I mean, I, I didn't. Know. I mean, it's not. I, I, didn't I mean, know. I mean, it's not. It's not really? like. It, it, no, no. Wait, no, wait. Let me. Let me. Get, let me. Wrestling fans who know the situation yeah. should know. Wrestling fans and know. And if you don't know, like, if, if you don't, this Viceland will. The Viceland story will make you want to go and search. General general wrestling fans that take the time to listen to a podcast uh, from a couple mm-hmm. of guys in Pittsburgh and Mike. Uh, you, you know, know the sentence. Bruiser, Bruiser Brody was stabbed in the shower in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Like that is a yeah. common wrestling. A- everybody who listens like to this, Mad Libs. Everybody who listens to this show has that that tattooed like uh across their back. Bruiser Brody mm-hmm. was stabbed. All wrestling mayhem fans know that. Everyone, yeah. Yeah, it, everyone, it's like everyone, everyone knows. Everyone. Arn Anderson was assaulted with scissors by Lex Luger. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Anyways, hey, you guys are smart wrestling fans, and hey, yeah, are are we sort? We were, yes, yeah, we have established you are the smartest of wrestling fans listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> as I lose my voice and want to tell you about our friends at Bardic Mystery Tour, uh, because. Dungeons and Dragons. I, really need to, I need, really need to watch a it. Dungeons, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast uh, from our friends over there at BardicMysteryTour.com. Uh, they regale the crowd with a tales of a rock band of bards on tour. They kick indoors, solve mysteries, and as an added bonus, they write original songs for the podcast. Go check it out. Go catch up. Uh, definitely helps me on my road trips. Uh, as I'm uh, crisscrossing the country uh, this month at ArcticMysteryTour.com. All right, guys, it is time to find out before I completely lose my voice. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Cool. Cool. <laughs> cool. Cool. Am cool. I talking over the bumper, maybe? But No, no, you're fine. Oh, sick. Okay. You're fine. Okay. Should I go first, what, then? Did you learn anything this week, sir? What did I learn this week in professional wrestling? Yes. Um, I, I learned question. this week that Nick fucking Gage is going against Joey Janela at the next GCW show, Jeez. and I'm hyped for it. I'm super hyped for it. Uh, Gage with the title defending. I got to see Nick Gage live. <laughs> Against Ultra Black Mantis. Oh, jeez. It orange. Man- what? It Ultra saw- Black Mantis versus Nick Gage. It was at the GCW show, the Orange Cassidy show over WrestleMania Ooh. weekend. So they did like uh, beat each other with Christmas ornaments. Uh, did the whole thing. Obviously. But wow. um, I'm excited for this week. I've learned that Nick Gage is going against Joey Janela, who is my fave. So I will be tuning into that GCW Fantastic. plug. And also, GCW was my favorite show over WrestleMania weekend. Wow. That was my favorite. Wow. That and DDT. But that. Anything, love. anything, whoop, whoop. whoop. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh my no. God. Whoa, Riz legs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Riz legs. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? <laughs> Riz, he's not whoa. wearing pants and we just whoa. saw it. I'm not <laughs> wearing pants at all. Hi. 
That's sick, dude. I love safe? it. Is it safe? <laughs> I thought it was bad when we were it's showing safe. Pornhub it's images safe. on the last show. It's safe. It's safe now. Awesomecast.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, but go back to me. Come back to me. I'm back on yeah, you. I'm you're back on. on you. You're no, on no, his face. No, no, no. Now like, we like, have to. I'm know. worried no, about no, it. No, like, I got to put this on a five-minute a five minute delay with a button that, now. Mm. I, I learned that RJ City is just the mayor of anxiety bill mm-hmm. great t-shirt great new t-shirt anxiety I I, right I, on i want to grab that one yeah yeah before yeah. nxt takes it down uh-huh <laughs> like he has that one he has the the, the wrestling school anxiety anxiety wrestling school mm-hmm. shirt as well um but yeah for those who haven't seen it, RJ, R, uh, RJ City has a black t-shirt with a mock NXT uh, logo on top of it, but only in the NXT lettering it says anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's hella mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Great, great one. How is, that not, how is that not Laura Sullivan's shirt? <laughs> and also, yeah. I, um, I, I learned that there's also a Cinco de Mayo $5 wrestling show happening soon. At cool. Cinco de Mayo. I really can't wait for that. Mm-hmm. I, wanted, I, I wish it was. Uh, I, I wish it was streaming. Who's so in that? It. Who's in that one? Freight train. Okay. Cool. Cool. Oh, Freight uh, friend of the show. Freight train. Freight show. Uh, Sorg, you need to play him. Freight train. Well, I mean, Tadio Ty, Ty, like train. this. Ty, we uh, used to have a question yeah. on the show for interviewees. You know, before. It was the first version of this. Yeah. Uh, where we said, hey, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? You want to know mm-hmm. what Freight Train wanted to be? What did Freight Train want to be? A lima bean. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Pretty chill. I'm going to, I mean, I don't know. Your, I'm going to throw it back to you. What vegetable would you be, Sorg? Uh, potato. That's a good one. Potatoes, potatoes not a vegetable. Because I got it's so like many food. eyes. Yeah, I think, I think we, we accepted think potato for potatoes. A while. Fine. I need to go back and find out what vegetable Johnny Gargano was. Mm-hmm. I thought you said a carrot. He, he, said a carrot. Right, Al, he probably was a carrot. Asparagus. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. Asparagus, just like that kid on Alf. Yeah, the asparagus song. Mm. You don't know what I, I do. I can't help you if you don't know what that is out wow. there, internet. <laughs> wow. Man, Mike, did you say what you learned yet? No, no, I didn't. Did you learn something, Mad Mike? I, I learned that we're in the Superstar Shake Month. Mm. Yeah. We're still, we're still shaking. Oh, yeah. we're, still, we're still shaking. Because it doesn't matter. Like I said before, it doesn't matter in a, in, in a couple months because it, they're going to shake it up again. Mm-hmm. And I also learned that, oh boy, Smack, like, I'm not sure what the directive was. But Raw doesn't care about women. And SmackDown doesn't care about tag teams. Jeez. Because look at those rosters. Mm. Now, even the Hardys had to relinquish the titles tonight. Well, I what? think the women are more, right? More important, well, right? The, women are, the, the, the female roster on SmackDown is stacked. It is mm-hmm. loaded. You, mm. can have, you could have a women's money in the bank match just with SmackDown people uh-huh. and still have a women's tag title match with SmackDown women. Yeah. Like, that's how stacked their roster is. You could have the Iconics versus Kyrie and Asuka versus Mandy and Sonya and still have an eight woman money in the bank match. Wow. Maybe that's a, yeah. I mean, maybe that's like that. That's going to, they're going to showcase ladies wrestling a little bit more on SmackDown. Yeah. I so guess. I th- they don't even have their own show, which is shit. They should have, they wow. they should have had their own show 10 years ago. But, I, I think I don't think it's more of I don't think it's a desire to not have their own show. I think it's just a matter of when do you film it? I mean, they film the men's know. show when like you, every day, so I think they could fit something yeah. in That's there. That's true. That's true. I mean, two hundred five live is an all men show. Everything is a, yeah. It's yeah. A, there's an all but men's everything. But mm-hmm. two hundred five live is also forty five minutes and two matches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The women's show. It's split with it's split split between at least two rosters, unless you're also counting NXT and NXT UK. Maybe. They also have two to three house shows a week. Mm-hmm. There's no place to film. Uh, I mean, just get I mean, easy here. Just get run of the get rid of one of the men's show and give women's a show. That's it. That's yeah. 
That's Here we right. go, Fox. Here we yeah, go, Fox. Like, and if you want to, if you want to make the argument too that like, well, they can't. They're on different rosters. It's fake. They could be on any rosters they want. You got the NXT UK <laughs> I mean, people this is on everywhere. What they're doing now. I'm yeah. aware of that, but I'm just saying. There's it's no- like Vince McMahon has the uh, wrestling Infinity Gauntlet, and uh, he can snap and make you a SmackDown. Yeah. yeah. All right, but if, but if you want the women's show to be good. Mm-hmm. There's men, there's plenty of bad men's show. Why has it got to be? Yeah. Like, there's no excuse for not having a women's I mean, show. It's just another who gender. Here, who here who does not work for WWE uh, watches main event regularly? I don't know if I can. No, nobody it, even knows how it, to watch it. Isn't it on Hulu? Well, main, event, main event is Hulu and um, International. Like, the only reason they still yeah. film it is because of the international contracts. Yeah. Hulu, maybe? Yeah, Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, Hulu. Someone Hulu. Like they don't. They don't put recent episodes on on. Uh, no. On. on they don't put it on the network. And Josh in the chat room saying, "No reason you can do main event and not just convert it to a lady show." Yep. Yeah. Do you want it? Do you want it to be seen? Yeah. Brother, they and, don't have a single oh, one. It doesn't matter who's seeing it. They just don't have it's a, one. It's a step forward. All right. <laughs> from the chat room, because we're starting a whole other podcast segment. Yeah, uh, we're, we're from the chat room, partner learned uh, <laughs> it's better to go to an indie show with people who know the wrestlers, and it's fun to have the Rev hide behind you. That did happen. There was a little bit of selfie moment I had with the Rev. Um, also Rev, um, um, I don't know about your methods, but congratulations for bringing prayer back to school. Uh, uh also Tina says stomping um, grounds. Mike, Michael PSA thanks you as well. That's right. Uh, Tina Key says stomping grounds is treading great balls of fire territory. That's what I've learned. I believe up in her area, uh, it's it, in Tacoma, yeah. Tacoma up there. Uh, stomping grounds is the new pay-per-view we're going to see this summer. Stomping grounds. Yeah, yeah. Stop it. it. It's and not the worst. Better than camping grounds. Well, that's true. Um, it's, it's better than capital punishment. Oh yeah. Oh, Especially yeah. given the timing. Uh, Josh Larkin of the Thrifty Podcast. What up, Josh? Hey. Yay! Learn that Magnum TA rides a Segway. Sick. Of course he does. Yeah. Sick. Uh, and I would imagine it's controlled by his mustache. Hmm. So, and that is it. I learned this week. Yeah, what have you learned? I learned that it is possible to potentially, I don't know how this worked out, find love at an indie wrestling show. I'm not the one that found it. I already had my love. But then then she she drove away. uh, She drove away. (laughs) So I don't know what that means. I don't know if I'm getting some messages. I know that the show notes are on my own tonight in the graphics. So good luck there. Yeah, you got to write your own. I got to write my own now. (laughs) Producer just said, I'm out. I'm going to hang with Dutters and go home and bed. And and, yeah. Uh, So uh, we talked about wrestling tonight. Yeah. Full help for the show notes. What was that? We talked about well, yeah. all the all all all, uh, all not, episode, matter of fact. Yes, except for that little bit where we started talking about He Man. But anyways, uh, I mean, guys, yeah, the, the Sonic conversation kind of. Thank, yeah, there's that too. Thank you so much, everybody. Into... Toddy, what up? Thrifty Podcast, part of the Sorgatron Media Network. Yeah, uh, yeah. So thanks for listening, everybody. If you want to check out Thrifty Podcast again at Thrifty Podcast on about every social media app: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Again, YouTube. Right. We do some thrift hauls. We release episodes every Sunday. Um, it's me and usually my friend Josh or somebody else. Uh, Josh is the best co-host in the world. Um, so thank you for tuning in, Josh. But thriftypodcast.com. I'm Toddy, and if you want to listen to the show, we will welcome you in. So, so throw that W up, baby. All right. Thank you, sir. That's right. Thank you so much for coming back. Of sure. course, the Riz with his Hulk Hogan buddy. Of course. Uh, go to my Twitter page right now at VE Riz. Uh, I'm still taking donations to the end of May uh, for the Alzheimer's Association for my uh, marathon that is happening, half marathon that is happening. Uh, shit. This Saturday. Excellent. Mad Meg 48. Uh, oh, sorry. Nope, that's all I have, sorry. All right, Mad Meg 483 on the tweets. Yeah, I, I talk about things and stuff. You mm-hmm. do things. I, also, YouTube.com slash popping. Nope. Ah. 
Uh, <laughs> please go check out everything. Uh, check out the Indie Mayhem show that's going to launch Thursday on your podcast platforms. Uh, we did a conference. This may be more for the wrestlers, but if you're interested in kind of like perspectives on social media, Dutters uh, was in here recording today. We did a social media special. Uh, talking about the rights and wrongs of social media around professional wrestling stuff we've seen stuff we've uh talked with uh, uh our friends in pro wrestling about you know helping them and figuring things out there so we kind of did a little bit of a, a discussion about that also i will put this teaser out there you are going to learn something about dutters that most people do not know that she's actually just don't spoil it, Rich. don't spoil she's, it. Actually, she's actually three foot tall Yes, she's that little alien from Men in Black. Inside the <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, chat room. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. Get roached. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.